Okay, we're ready. Okay. We're so we're doing cups and handles, and uh, I'm just going to throw some different cup shapes. Um, this is a real basic cylinder shape, and then I'm going to I'm going to trim a cup, and I'll put some handles on two cups for you, so you can see. But I'll just kind of throw some shapes to get started. So this is based just off of a cylinder. Make your entry, opening, and compress that a little bit. I'm noticing a few cracks on the bottoms. Depending on the clay mix batch, sometimes you get some cracks. So I'm compressing that with my thumb. And we'll make the pull. This is based off of a straight cylinder, but slightly flared out. There's a couple things to think about on cups. One is the rim and the, the form. I'm going to rib this take off a little clay and we'll start sh shaping this just a little bit. Use your potter's knife, take off that extra clay. But I'm going to I'm going to rib it. And this cup is going to be kind of just a straight cup. I'm going to put some lines in it kind of like a barrel. But the rim is what we got to figure out. And I, I've said earlier that a rim that goes straight up is, com is good, slightly curved out, like my thumb, or slightly curved in. But if it curves in too much, you can't drink out of it because it catches the water. And if, you, if it curves out too much, it spills out the sides of your mouth. So I'm just going to fix this rim shape right here. I'm going to compress it like this and just make it so it fits your lip a little bit. A thinner rim is a little bit nicer to drink out of than a thicker rim. There's our rim shape. Then I'm going to use my rib. I'm going to decorate this just a little bit. This is super simple stuff. Just kind of shape this. But I'm going to put a couple lines in this. Just decorative lines. Use my sponge just to tone those down just a tiny bit. This might have a handle that would come off here or curls up from the bottom. There's one cup and handle. Since I've ribbed it, I can lift it off. Okay, the next one I'm going to do has an undercut shape. A lot of students try to make the undercut shape, but they make it from trimming, so it doesn't. The inside and the outside sh shape should reflect each other, and so that's that's why I like to show this. So as I start to sh shape this cylinder, I actually start right into the undercut shape and then bring it up. This one, the rim is going to kind of curve in at the top. One more pull on that. Okay. 
So the key with this form is that your inside shape and your outside shape has the same shape, so you, you, you're not making something really thick. So that's the undercut, and then that inside shape reflects that. If we were to rib this and just kind of clean it up a little bit, I like it to be a little bit loose, and I like those rib marks to show up. Kind of see those rib marks on there? Then I'm going to slightly curve this one in just a little bit so it'll have a little bit of a, it's almost straight, but there is a slight inward curve to it. Make sure you dry your hands off when you lift your pieces off so you're not making marks. <laughs>